Can our next guest may already be recognised as the frontman of the Blizzards and, of course, the coach from The Voice, but he keeps adding new strings to his bow. Uh, last month, he was the premiere screening... Uh, it was the premiere screening of his band's mockumentary, a prelude to their new album, and to make him even busier, he has launched a podcast on mental health and mindfulness entitled Where Is My Mind? Brezzy, you're very welcome. Thank you, guys. How are you, sir? Good morning, Brezzy. I haven't seen you in the longest time. Yeah. Uh, you've spoken before about your own mental health. This is what the podcast is about. You've spoken, mm. But you have spoken uh, over the last number of years about your own mental health mm. journey. Just remind us about Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey was the book I wrote quite a while ago called... Um, Jeffrey was the name I gave my mind, my mm. brain. Um, and it kind of said if I named something, I could start relating to it some way. Because yeah. I spent so many years pretending it didn't exist and running from it. So the idea was to name him. And I don't think this is something that, you know, you'd read in a psychology handbook. It was just something I thought about. And I wanted to kind of get to know Jeffrey a little bit and understand what makes Jeffrey tick and what makes him happy, what makes him stress, what makes him unhappy. And that was my way of kind of figuring out how to start moving with this and how engaging with it and figuring it out. And it was ultimately the best thing I ever did. And then the book I wrote was called Me and My Mate Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. um, he's my mate sometimes and sometimes he's not sometimes my mate, but that's, that's the nature of being a human. But we had no, you were in the public eye. We had no idea that this was going on in your head mm. at the time. Did you feel pressure to, to like keep it to yourself and not share it or talk about it? It just wasn't pressure. I just realised that an awful lot of my energy was going into disguising it all the time. Okay. Uh, and I wanted to put that energy into actually dealing with it and figuring out what I could do to progress it. Um, so that was, and I think a lot of people can relate to that because you spend some of the excuses I used to make, you know, trying to hide it and, and disguise it. And it was just, it was silly. And it, it kind of, I didn't fully grasp it myself. And it was very hard when you don't grasp something to explain it to somebody else. So that's kind of where I kind of, I decided to, to stop hiding it, really. Uh -huh. It's kind of in our culture as well, though, Brezzy, isn't it? To go, everything's grand. You know, people ask you how you are, and the answer is always going to be, I'm grand, I'm grand. We're not necessarily, especially growing up in mm. Ireland in the 80s, let's say, you know, we weren't a nation of talkers, particularly about our mental health. And that voice in your head can be the cruelest mm. voice mm. in terms of how critical it is about you. Yeah, well, I remember my, my education with mental health was when my hero, and an awful lot of people, and probably someone you would have looked up to, uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, mm -hmm. uh, iconic rock star in the 90s. Yeah. And I remember when he died, saying to one of my teachers, going, oh my God, what happened? Like, it was, because I never heard this word. I never heard the word suicide. I never heard any of these words. I always think to myself, imagine something like that happened to a huge pop icon now and the imp impact that would have had, that would have on young people. Yeah. And it had a huge impact on me because I didn't know why and I was very confused. So I asked the teacher one day and he threw a piece of chalk at me and called me a coward. <laughs> so that was my mental health education. So tell me a young person who's going to go, well, actually, you know what, now that I, now that I think of it, mm -hmm. I'm going to start talking about mine. Um, so that was a long time ago, longer, not just in years, but it was a long time ago in our mindset. Our mindset's changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. um, it is changed in a way that we've realised that this is part of being human. Uh, it, and I spent the last two years of my... My, my life studying and, and went back to UCD to really understand not just about the mind, but how the mind was built, how it was designed back when like our ancestors lived in caves. And it worked really well for us back then. It's not working so well for us now because yeah. it's overwhelming us now because the world is moving at such a rate um, that our, 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 our minds and everyone's mind is kind of struggling to keep up with it. It's intense. Uh, have you been surprised at the reaction? Like, the thing is, everyone's got their own problems. Mm -hmm. And I suppose since you spoke about yours, what kind of a reaction have you had from people... It's been brilliant, but I think the other aspect is we, we're in a new phase now. I think the awareness phase, and people are talking now, mm -hmm. and it's great in schools all across the country, people are addressing it. The stigma's still there, like, don't get me wrong. There's, there's systematic stigma there, you know. People who work in um, things like the guards, the stuff that they're exposed to, and this, you know, there's support there for them, but a lot of them are reluctant to use it mm -hmm. um, because of the stigma that still is yeah. associated. So these are things we've got to look at. Uh, we assume it's someone like a guard, just, you know, the stuff they have to see is really, really, really difficult. We just assume because they're guards that they can handle it. But we're, you know, are they getting trained in stuff like post-traumatic stress disorder and stuff like that? So, yes, what we have is really good awareness. What we don't have is the systems that we need to help people. And we're still in what we call a reactive model here. Yeah. So our reactive model is we help people when they get to a place that's mm -hmm. difficult. And that's not just expensive economically, it's very expensive humanly and societally and for community and all those aspects. So what we need to develop is preventative models. Mm -hmm. um, and we also got to look at things like inequality. We've, you know, we keep getting 
shove GDP down our throat and unemployment rates, but we've still got absolutely rampant inequality in this country. People who need that help, and the real horrible irony of it is, is often people who need the most help are people who can't afford it and can't get it. Mm -hmm. So these are things we have to address. These are, these are things that we can't just pretend don't exist. So I, we got to mark the really positive progress society's made in the last few yeah. years in that people talk in bars about it, people talk in, in clubs and everything, and it's good, it's really positive, but now we've got to move to the next phase. Okay. What are we going to do about it? So yeah. the podcast, Brezzy, is Where Is My Mind? I can't say that without wanting to sing it in my head, <laughs> but uh, you're dealing with all of that in the podcast yeah. and mindfulness. Yeah. So mindfulness is another term that's kind of bandied about, isn't it? And it's very yeah. trendy to talk mindfulness mm -hmm. yeah. and everything. What is it to you? It's funny, the, the term that people are using, and a guy called Rob Purser, we would have studied it, he calls, sometimes calls it Mac mindfulness. Uh, it's the kind of commodification of it, where people mm. now kind of see it as this great, great panacea to, to bring them to this enlightened world yeah. where everything is. And it really is maybe, it's a, it's a lot more layered and deeper than the people think it is. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more to it. Um, which is why I went back to do my master's in it, because I wanted to understand it at a really, not just an academic level, but it, it had a huge impact on me. And I used to watch what was happening in society and going, we're kind of commodifying this now, and we're trying to make it packageable for the Western Absolutely, world. Absolutely, yeah. And it's like, you know, some things are great, and the apps are, some of the apps are fi fine, but for me, there's, a, there's much more potential in this if we can help people understand it. And for me, mindfulness wasn't just about, um, wasn't about meditation as much, it was about how I how I looked at the world, how I treated people, how I listened to people, how I give them my presence when I'm with them, mm -hmm. how, you know, how more present I can be in my life. Because I always felt, I was, I was always trying to get somewhere and achieve things. Yeah. And, and I spent most of my life doing that, that I actually forgot to ironically live. But are we all doing that? Are yes. we all racing to do this, that and the other and trying to tick all these boxes across our day and actually mm -hmm. not getting anything real done? And it is absolutely not our fault. Uh, and that's the one thing the podcast wanted to approach is that we spend so much emphasis uh, blaming ourselves and, and, and going, there's something internally that I don't have or not able to deal with. And I wanted, the podcast isn't really about mental health, it's about culture, it's about our environment, it's about these, this environment that we've created, um, which is sometimes great, but sometimes it's absolutely too fast. It's mm -hmm. just overwhelming. Our brains have not been designed to keep, a lot of, uh, a neuroscience friend of mine, um, Michael Keane, he says that we have an old brain for a new world. Mm -hmm. And these are things we've got to start addressing, and that's what the podcast looks at. So like, where did our brain come from? Why are you getting stressed? Why are you getting anxious? Is there something we can do about it? Um, and look at the elements of culture that are causing this. And there's a, there is elements of the culture. Like if you, if you go online for five minutes, you'll, you really will become overwhelmed by the, yep. the level of apathy and anger and hate. So these are things we look at. How many of them have you done? How many podcasts are online? Six. Six. We've done, there's three online, there's three more to come. You're rocking um, along. Where can we get it? Yeah. Uh, it's on all uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Acast. So it's on all, all Where, my wherever podcasts. You get it. It's completely free. You can get it downloaded. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. Download it. Uh, you're a film star now as well. No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> uh, this is amazing. Yeah, that was a that was a complete joke. Yeah, it turned I, out to be not a joke. You've had a great reaction to it. Sometimes this is... the biggest things start out yeah. like that, though, don't yeah. they? It's worse when you, when you when you want to be serious and it becomes a joke. Yeah. Then, you're, then yeah. you're in trouble. This is a, a mockumentary, is it? Yeah. Tell yeah. us about it. Uh, well, we even the Blizzards were making an album. And we were like, you know, we've got to think differently. It, the industry is completely different to when we came out last mm. time. Spotify and it's all algorithm now and numbers yeah. and streaming. Mm. So. We're like, let's do something different. Let's tell a story about what's changed and let's tell us quite a self-deprecating story about ourselves. And it's a mockumentary that is called Who Would Want To Be In A Guitar Band? And it was kind of like, when we went away, guitar music almost became illegal. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> you would never hear it if you can't yeah, play it's guitar music in, on the radio. This thing's it, all sick. It is, we yeah. have a bit. We have we a bit. So the Blizzards Behind the Music mockumentary premiered at the Galway Film Fla last month, featuring an impressive list of Irish and international stars. Here's a little look at the trailer. First day of principal photography. Gotta say, I have a few butterflies. Or it might be that Chinese from last night. <laughs> this is Camden recording. Guys, could I do that again? I just... I just wanna... You mean Brexit? Trump. And now we have to deal with a new Blizzards album. You're dead set in releasing this album, guys, yeah? You pick <laughs> are you, like? I'll give you Mr. Louis Copeland. Louis Copeland? Uh, you got the new song, you got the show, you shoot the music video as well, is it? Pretty massive. We've a uh, music video this week. You managed to blow an entire year's budget in one day. It's a brand new benchmark in Dude, it's the blizzards. It's hardly Boney M. It's a disgrace. It's an embarrassment and it's nonsense. 
Well, there's it's some lineup of well-known faces there. And it does be clear for every person we asked, 20 turned it down. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was stubbornness <laughs> and uh, Irish kind of, we pushed it, resilience, yeah. It looks class. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So and we where didn't know people ones. will be able to see that present? Uh, we're going to have a Dublin screening okay. in the next probably month, I'd say. We're just finalising details right. on that. And it's, um, yeah, I, I, when we did the Galway one, it was very funny because half the people didn't realise it was a joke, so they weren't sure whether to laugh. <laughs> right, and okay. they're like, will we offend them? Because we were standing at the back. You're going, there. And then, then half the people copped on quite quickly. That's, it's a bit of fun. You're laughing at yourselves. A little bit. Which is uh, it's nice to important. see you back with the boys as well, with the blizzards. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it, it was, yeah, it really is a really important part of my life. Yeah. It's a huge outlet for me. So being in a band, especially playing live, I think that's something that if you try, you can't give up. It's too important to me. Yeah, any new music on the way? Or what's uh, the new album, yeah. We just Lovely. released. Lovely. Yeah, so it's taken a while, but uh, we have a new album coming out the, in autumn. Have Lovely. you come back together as different people? Uh, you know, because you had that hiatus, and I, I wonder, is it like old friends coming back together? Does everything revert to normal? No, absolutely or not. Or are you just Everyone, very different, life mature? Moves on, people have kids, family, all things change and priorities change. But uh, once you still kind of are honest with each other and transparent, yeah. Yeah. what you want out of things, it, it's the way to do it. But it, like at the end of the day, we wouldn't do it if we weren't having the crack again. Yeah. And that's what this time around is about. We were, it was so intense the last time. Yeah. You're always trying to please other people. Yeah. And other agendas were like, you know what? If we go down that road, we won't enjoy it. So let's just see what happens. Have a little fun. You should get to, tell them to listen to the podcast, oh, the lads, yeah. and then <laughs> and then you're all in the same space. They're they're not into it at all. <laughs> right, okay. I think that even if they were, they wouldn't say they were. Right, exactly, okay. which right. is probably more likely. Yeah. Brezzy, always a pleasure. Thanks, Thank lads. you very Cheers, much sir. for joining us. Um, excuse me. The Where Is My Mind podcast uh, episodes are available on Acast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts.